Tom, um, we're here in beautiful uh, Izmir, Turkey, at this uh, consultation. And there has been a question or two that has crossed my mind. Sure. I, why in the world are we here? Well, uh, Mark, that's a great question in terms of, I think, setting, allows us to set some context here. So one of the things that we determined as a, as a team uh, and, and the board was on board with this as well, is that we want to explore three new difficult areas, hard places. And there are very few places in this world that in terms of regions um, are more difficult and, and harder to, for the gospel to flourish in than Central Asia. So we're here at a, a conference hearing stories and uh, one of the things that I have been completely um, surprised by is that my experience with Central Asia was 10, between 8 and 10 years ago. Was when I was in, in a couple of the stands. We knew people here. We lived in Lithuania, had students from there. Um, went to this conference uh, to, to learn about their context a little bit more. And it was a very difficult place. Uh, to, to, you've heard horror stories of, of persecution, um, and I won't go into all that. But here we are 10 years later, and some of the countries that at, one, at that time 10 years ago were closed are open now. And you hear this great sense of freedom um, emerging, uh, and the gospel is taking root through church plants, through uh, creative expression, business's mission, through NGOs that are Christian in nature and doing this phenomenal work uh, of outreach, um, uh, creation care, uh, working among the poor, uh, the marginalized of society, and really shining a light, uh, the light of the gospel uh, into these dark corners. So I... I it's it's not it's it's the time for the outreach foundation to to not come in with our horses parading you don't want to do that and we don't do that but it's time for us to seek how the spirit might lead us uh into some terrific relationships that need our um prayers and need the kind of fuel that we bring and some encouragement so, Tom, you've answered that why, I think, uh, quite well, and um, you've even moved into that. Second question I was going to ask you about what you've discovered mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. um, but what has also been, um, I mean, you've met a lot of people, talked to a lot of people in ministry. Um, what has been um, the great surprise of your being here? <sighs> You know, one of the goals that I had for our, our visit, and it's just you, myself, and Doug Bielsen. Um, and I was very curious about how you might respond. Uh, you're the executive director, and um, I know you wear that hat, hat very humbly. But still, it's it's really important for for you to be energized uh, on a deep level. And and I think I wasn't surprised. <laughs> by the reactions I've seen in you. Um, but it is so pleasing to see that you're seeing what, what I've seen. It, yeah. it has been an amazing experience, and I am just left in awe of some of the people that I have met here and how this spirit is moving in their lives. Yeah. We just... Tell we, us about... Why don't you tell... I'm going to let you tell about Ruslan. Well, Ruslan, I mean, here is a 35-year-old guy that felt compelled um, to start some churches, you know, just 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 be a part of one church to begin with. And he comes from a horrendous background that you wouldn't, he, he's lucky to be alive, um, you know, probably should be in prison um, because of what he was doing in areas that were really close to Christianity, but also just hostile to who he was as a human being. Here he comes in and um, he has an encounter with Christ and um, is meeting others that are having an encounter with Christ. And so he's galvanized this, this group of leaders and 
Um, they're planting churches everywhere. Uh, young people are gathering, they're coming together for training, and then they're going out into, the, the, into a very difficult region, and they are just on fire. He really is are. just a phenomenal young man, mm-hmm. and, and he's moving in such phenomenal ways that he's, he's, he's establishing the self-sustaining church. In his words, he doesn't want it supplanted by western dollars right instead he's he's got people that are tent makers but so committed to the presentation of the gospel it is absolutely stunning i've invited him actually to our board meeting yeah. in the fall and and we hope to have him there he can travel to the united states does on on several occasions and uh, you're going to come encounter with a man mm-hmm that uh, just makes your heart sing. So, yeah. And I see that over and over here, uh, the connections that we're making throughout Central Asia and the different uh, NGOs that are here, uh, but also uh, the existence of the church in these regions, you know, such as Tajikistan. Tijer- uh, Tijer- 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 I got to get the, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, if you're all kind of chuckling, these some of these names are not very easy, and I really don't want to come even close to spelling them. We have Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, um, Azerbaijan, and then all the other different ethnic regions. North Caucasus has what? What did they say? Thirty different people groups, or it, it's it's an incredible. So they just call it the North Caucasus because there's just so many people. Yeah, I, I sat down and had lunch with uh, the fine people at White, Wycliffe Associates. Mm-hmm. They have so much Bible translation work to do here that they have a team just right here. Um, that deals specifically with Bible translation. And their model now is shifted where they're working with the church and the church translates into the different dialects that are in its neighborhood. And uh, then they need uh, those Bibles printed. So, I mean, that's just one of uh, many, many different ministries that are just uh, so life-giving and um, enriching. So my spirit is full in being here. And I certainly hope that you uh, in the Outreach Foundation family uh, might pull alongside some of these ministries. This is really cutting edge ministry. It really is. It really is. One of the, you asked about what surprised me, and I, one of the things that when I was here last time, they weren't praying for these kinds of stuff. But one, of, I don't know if you heard it, but they are asking for people to pray for signs and wonders. And and I asked about that today. I said, so what? Tell me a little bit about why would we be praying for miracles to happen? They said because that's what people are needing to see to become followers of Christ. So they are as a specific prayer request to all of us is that we, when we pray for the church in Central Asia, that we pray for signs and wonders to be done, and that God's name will be glorified. Uh, the man in the white robe is a common vision here, and they are wanting us to pray that people encounter this man in the white robe. And his name is Jesus. Um, so so it, it was. it's really refreshing, Mark, to come here this time and hear so much hope. Uh, not that it wasn't here before, but I would say that there is a hope in, um, in transformation of the culture now. And before, it was hope that they could even survive. All right. Um, that said, there are still problems, and, and we can't overlook that. Um, Kyrgyzstan, for example is in a place where they're feeling increased pressure from Russia now. And, um, and so that is causing some pullback, and, and they're getting ready for that kind of uh, pressure again. Um, so, so it's not all easy. And, um, but uh, anyway, I'm just glad you're here. I'm glad that you're excited about this. I'm glad you see a purpose in it. Um, and I can see a clear path forward for us now. Yeah, so and we're, we're hoping, as we do in all, um, relations with our donors and both churches and individuals and organizations that that uh, you will do the great work of the gospel in showing up in this region um, and certainly committing it to prayer as Tom's encouraged us to do. So thanks, Tom, for being yeah, here. Yeah, and thanks, Mark, for the opportunity to talk to you. And uh, let's show up together. <laughs>